I know you and other African leaders over the years have done really an amazing job in getting children into schools, but you always talk about the barriers that remain. What, what for you is the biggest barrier to getting full um, attendance in, in African schools? Enormous uh, obstacles which comes from the need of families to break the cycle of believing that the girl child is inferior to the boy child. So we are struggling here with the social norms and the attitudes of uh, parents, community leaders, and the whole environment of who is the girl child and what, how she values exactly the same as a boy child. How has the pandemic then affected education, especially for young children in Africa, especially girls, has it made much of a difference? It made a huge difference. The moment governments, quite understandably, decided to declare the lockdown and schools were closed, uh, children had to remain at home. Some schools had conditions to put programs online. But the huge majority of children on this continent, they live in houses where there is no electricity. And let alone to think of internet. The whole year of 2020, for hundreds of millions of African ch children, are simply lost. They had no opportunity. They stayed at home. And even now, we are in 20. 21 and schools are not operating at full. How many of those children do you think will eventually come back or are they lost? I don't think anyone knows because schools are still closed. So the implications of this are still unfolding. I think it will just be guessing. Mm -hmm. We really have to wait until the moment schools are open for everyone and do the work with communities to make sure that uh, children do go back to school, particularly girls, of course. If you had control of Canada's education budget for Africa, where would you spend the money? Mostly in primary and secondary education, because that's where the swelling of uh, giving opportunities for every single child stands. Before children complete the secondary, they do not have the knowledge and skills to work on their own without regressing, you know, in whatever they have learned. What keeps you awake at night? It is precisely uh, thinking of those kids who go to bed hungry, children who have no shelter. And if you look at uh, the situation, for instance, in my specific country at the moment, there is a combination of climate change and conflict. And there are children who are simply do not have the very basic conditions for survival. That keeps me awake at night. Tell me a success story about education in Africa. I'm launching an initiative of uh, adolescent movement, which is the uh, adolescent girls, because it's the time and the age where you can invest seriously in those seeds which will make a different kind of women of the future. To break with all these traditional norms which we're talking about. So we are working together, not only to bring all children into the system, but to improve the way we empower adolescents to become a an age in which you break the cycle of poverty in Africa. Thank you so much, and what a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much for having me.